I worked so hard to get this dog on camera. So hard. <laughs> there she goes. On the other side to look out the other windows. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the D Hard House podcast. My name is Alicia and you can find me on other social media as Readnit Run on Instagram and Aliddy Knits 2 on Ravelry. We also have a group on Ravelry for the podcast called D Hard House Podcast and do join that group to see the show notes with links to any project pages or other other videos or websites that I might reference during this episode. So welcome back if you're a returning viewer and welcome if you're new. I'm so glad you've stopped in to join us today. So yeah, it's been a little while. Um, I feel really rusty recording this episode, but um, I'm glad I'm making time to do this. So Yes, I have a co-host today, my two-year-old black Labrador, who's laying on the floor right now, relaxing. And she may or may not make an appearance in the podcast. This is usually what happens is she'll uh, walk around the house with me as I gather up all of my projects that I want to share with you, and she'll walk around back here and be all active, and then as soon as I sit down and start recording, she lays down to sleep. So <laughs> I might have some video clips to put in of her joining me in those endeavors. <laughs> Say hello to the camera. Say hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a funny dog. Anyway. So before I get into the nitty goodness, I do want to say and I will put my knitting down so I'm not distracted. <laughs> there has been a lot of talk in the knitting community about diversity, inclusion, and equality. And I just wanna say, as a teacher, I fully support all of that. Um, I am in education, I'm a college math instructor, and it's huge. Uh, not just in the knitting community, but in education, in the workplace, in in your local communities. It's such a big deal. And um, I just wanna say that I'm very happy that everyone's having a really nice open conversation about it. Like, we're not hiding our dirty laundry anymore and keeping things a secret we're actually talking about it and I think that's really important. I'm just really glad that everyone's embracing the conversation uh, and participating in it really well uh, from from what I've seen. So I'm not going to talk a lot about it here because so many people have and I feel like I'd only be repeating what everyone else is saying, and I, I don't know that I could really enhance the conversation anymore, but I just wanted to throw it out there that I think it's really neat that we're talking, because you can't get anywhere without that first step, and it's, it's neat. So that is that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I totally got distracted and messed up my shawl knitting. Okay, now I'm going to have to take back. Not too far, though. Mm. I have some coffee in my knitting mug. And I love this thing. And I love the coffee. And it's so good. Why are you all blurry? There we go. 
Okay, so it has been a little while since I've seen you guys. Um, so just a little recap on the last few weeks. Um, I teach at the college and I have more students this, this semester than I have had in the past. And it's just, it's, it's a lot of work, you guys. It's a lot of work. It's like it's a full-time job or something. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just when the semester's on, it's always like, there's always something to do. Always. Um, I actually have a separate YouTube channel, uh, to post math tutorial videos. And so I've been doing a lot of that. So <laughs> I've been making a lot of videos, just not knitting videos. So if you're ever interested in learning more about college algebra, trigonometry, uh, business math, or statistics, I have some tutorial videos over on my other YouTube channel. <laughs> Not that many of you would be interested, but if you ever were, they're up and I share them with the world because I like sharing things, which is the whole reason I have this podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been recording a lot of math tutorial videos, replacing my old ones with new ones that are shorter, um, a little bit snappier with some editing. Um throwing in some music every once in a while. And so I've been having fun playing around with that and trying to give my students some better resources that they're able to use wherever they are, because you can pull up YouTube on your smartphone and watch a five minute little how to work out this type of math problem. And so I've been doing a lot of that on top of my actual like lecture time. So yeah, <laughs> it seems like I never stop. Like I'm always doing something all the time. Um, anyway, I'm just tired. I'm so tired, tired, exhausted. And I still have like two more months in this semester. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so that's been going on. I've done quite a bit of knitting somehow in between all of that, I've gotten some knitting done. And yeah, that's, oh, I've been running. You guys have been keeping up with my running. And the weather here is all over the place, all over. So I live in Texas and it has been 75 degrees Fahrenheit and sunny. It has been 30 degrees and cloudy and windy. It's been all over. It's like we can't decide whether it's winter or spring yet and it just keeps going back and forth. So last week I was able to actually go running outside when it was 70 degrees Fahrenheit outside and now today it's in like the high 40s, low 50s, too cold for my tender lungs. Uh, but yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't know what's worse. But up the, I don't know if it's spring yet or the polar, no, I'd say polar vortex is definitely worse. <laughs> I am so sorry for all of you who are experiencing negative double digit Fahrenheit temperatures. That's incredible. So I hope you're all staying warm and safe and snuggled up inside with your knitting and that that has all passed. <laughs> anyway, so that's what I've been doing. And as far as, yeah, that's what I've been doing. So I want to talk about um, some announcements. So my first announcement is that I released a pattern on Ravelry a couple days ago, and this is a project you have seen before <laughs> if you're a returning viewer. 
And that project um, was my cowl that I knit uh, right around the holidays leading up to Christmas uh, out of some mini skeins that I dyed up. So these are all in um, D Hart House Creations yarn. And D Hart House Creations is my shop on Etsy where I sell hand dyed yarn and handmade bags. And uh, I'd used to sell stitch markers in the past. Maybe I'll put some more up at some point. <laughs> but anyway, this uh, is a cowl that's designed for your mini skeins. So the idea is that with each color change, the pattern changes as well. And so it kind of keeps it interesting in a couple ways because you're switching colors, but you're also switching pattern. So, so, <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is called the Winter Break Cowl. And a few episodes ago, I asked you guys for any name suggestions. I was having a hard time naming this pattern. And so one of, uh, one of our viewers uh, helped me pick the name. Uh, so thank you again, La Jolla Girl. Uh, I met La Jolla Girl at the DFW Fiber Fest last year. And I hope to see her again at this year's event in April. But anyway... Um, as a thank you for helping me name the pattern, I sent her a free copy, uh, and it is posted up on Ravelry. It is available, and what I do with new pattern releases is I mark the pattern 20% off for the first uh, month of release. So this pattern, the Winter Break Cowl, will be 20% off until March 6th, and, um... Yeah, so you can pick that up on Ravelry as a digital download. So, um, yeah, I just... Okay, so let me take you through the colors, first of all. Um, these were all 20 gram mini skeins, so about 92 yards of fingering weight yarn. Uh, this is in my classic base, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and the colors are blueberries, cranberries, eggnog, dark chocolate, and evergreen. Like I said, it was around the holidays, <laughs> but uh, the total uh, cowl is 100 grams of yarn, so you just use up your whole mini skein. Uh, mini skein set, or just five different mini skeins you have, or leftover yarn. Um, I specifically wrote the pattern to say, you know, continue in this pattern until you run out of yarn or until the desired length. So what you can do is make this cowl as long or short as you want. Now, I keep folding it in half so that I can hold it up on screen a little easier than, than this. So, um, anyway, the idea was that, you know, I work on a project and I always have like a little bit left over. And it's hard to find something to make out of those little bits you have left over. Or you do buy a mini skein set, but you need a project to showcase that mini skein set. You don't necessarily want to just put all those mini skeins into a big blanket and it gets lost in there. So, um, so yeah, that's what um, this pattern was designed for. And I did specifically choose very, very different colors here. I wanted a very colorful cowl. Uh, I knit this in the winter months and I was looking for a little more color in my life. Uh, I really want to knit another one using more subtle tones and uh, maybe a little less variation between the colors. And I want to see how that turns out. So uh, yeah, this is the Winter Break Cowl and this is available on Ravelry. Okay, so for other announcements, um, <laughs> I want to try out something something new with the podcast. Um, like I said earlier, I've been making a lot of tutorial videos for my math students, and I would really like to make some more, um, I would like to make just any at all, <laughs> uh, some tutorial videos about knitting. So 
Uh, I really appreciate when people post these resources out there uh, to share for free, and I would like to help enhance the community in sharing some, some more tutorial videos as well. So I'm looking forward to doing some of that in the future and also just trying to make some more like interesting, fun episodes. Uh, I love sitting here and sharing with you the things that I'm working on and the things that I've finished. Uh, but I'd also like to do some more creative episodes. So uh, I don't have everything pinned down to a T yet, so I'm not going to share all the details with you until I know for sure what it is I'm doing and when I'm doing it. Uh, but you can look forward to some, some new content from me in the future. Just throwing that out there. I'm excited. I can't keep it a complete secret. So <laughs> anyway, so for uh, knitting stuff, I have a finished object, you guys. It's not what I'm holding in my hand. <laughs> it's what I'm wearing. So I am wearing a shawl uh, that I started and finished between the last episode and this one, which is, it's been like two or three weeks. So it shouldn't seem that amazing. Anyway, uh, this is a new shawl design uh, that I came up with, and I'm going to take this off to show it to you a little bit better. Okay, so this is my new shawl design, which uh, is not released yet. I am still working on uh, typing up the pattern and I need to find a good day to take pictures. Um, usually the light is, the sunlight is so strong outside that I have to close the blinds and it's still like crazy bright. I have the blinds completely open. It is so cloudy here today. Anyway, um, I need good lighting to take good pictures. But yeah, so the idea behind this design was all about showcasing that one skein of yarn that you get at a yarn festival or as a souvenir skein of yarn. And you you buy it because you're drawn to the, the amazing colors or the new base or whatever it might be. But then you really have no idea what to make out of it. <laughs> so um, that was this skein of yarn for me. So this is, uh, I'll grab the tag, this is Western Sky Knits, and this is on their Magnolia Sock, which is an 80-10-10, superwash merino, cashmere, and nylon, oh my gosh, and the colorway is Astrid, and I picked this up at one of the two DFW Fiberfest events that I've been to. And it's really funny because I am now living in Texas, but before living in Texas, I lived in Montana, which is where I went to graduate school. And Western Sky Knits is based out of Montana. So when I saw that they had a booth at DFW Fiberfest, I was like, oh, I can bring home a little piece of Montana with me. Now, while I was in grad school, I was not a knitter because I did not have time for that. Like a mathematics grad student, any grad student, we are busy people, right? So I did not have the hobby of knitting while I was in grad school. So I just, I had to get a skein of yarn from them to remind me a little bit about Montana and kind of be like, oh, I wish I would have been a knitter while in grad school. But to be honest, I didn't have time for that. So anyway, it is gorgeous. And the colorway is Astrid and it's blue and purple and pink and brown and white. And it's gorgeous. It's not coming up on camera. There we go. So I wanted to make a shawl out of this. And since it's an 80-10-10, I was like, oh, it's not going to be socks. It's going to be something wrapped around my neck. Uh, but I didn't want it to just be this one colorway. I wanted to have a, um, a coordinating but contrasting color to go with it. So the, um, the main color here does have 
little pops of cream in it. So I found this cream yarn uh, in my stash and decided to use it as the coordinating color. And I think it just helps make the main color stand out even more. So this is a boomerang shaped shawl and uh, it is mostly garter stitch which means it's really fast. <laughs> you knit knit knit. But I wanted to add a little intrigue so I added these eyelet sections and the eyelet sections start out with less eyelets, more eyelets, and then even more eyelets. So again, I didn't want to lose interest on this project. I wanted to keep it um, exciting and new. So anyway, yes, here it is. I love that it's so long. This is one of those shawls that's not super deep, but it is really long. And I like having some of those in my stash uh, to wear, my, my finished object stash. Um, but yeah, so this is a really nice one to wear. I like the stripes. I like the colors. It's just so much fun. And Marjorie has decided to wake up a little bit. Hi, Marjorie. Hello. <laughs> oh, you noticed me. Um, yeah, so I am, like I said, I just finished it. I wove in the ends a couple days ago and, uh, I haven't washed or blocked it, but I think I'm going to, to get this last, um, eyelet section to really stretch out a little bit more, but, uh, oh, it feels amazing with that cashmere and the yarn and, excuse me. I used almost the whole skein, almost the whole thing. So um, yeah, I think it's a really good project, like I said, to showcase that one skein you get and you don't know what to make out of it. Like it's not enough to do a, a sweater, but you don't really want to use it on socks and um, shawls aren't always just one skein. So what do you do? Um, so yeah, anyway, I really like it and I'm excited to, um, finish up the pattern for you guys. Okay, so that is my only finished object to show you, <laughs> but uh, I have several works in progress, you guys. And one of them I'm working on right now, and I'm trying to get to the end of the row. I'm almost there, I promise. <laughs> but uh, it's another shawl that I'm working on. And actually, I showed you guys this one um, a while back and I had to set it down because I ran out of yarn. I actually needed to go to the store and buy a second skein. So finally did that. And now I'm finished with the row. <laughs> All right, so this is another shawl design that I'm working on. And before I lift up the whole thing, I'm gonna show you the little swatch that I made. So I was watching the um, Knitting Expat. Knit, knitting expat podcast with Mina Phillip and she had mentioned making a swatch for a shawl design to send in um, to the person that was commissioning it and I just got fixated on the whole knitting a swatch for a shawl design I thought that was a really neat idea so I did it too <laughs> thank you Mina um, that I had I had an idea for the shawl and I went with it and hated how it looked so I had to rip back and so then I got this other idea and I was like I really don't want to have to keep knitting all of this and ripping back it's the ripping back part right so I was like well duh swatch that is the whole point right so yeah swatches are actually kind of cool so yeah, this is the idea for the shawl. So last time I showed it to you guys, I don't know how far I was, but yeah, I had this idea of transitioning from the seed stitch into this other pattern and I don't know, it just wasn't, it wasn't coming across super well. Um, I don't know if it was the yarn or 
what what it was, but it just wasn't looking the way I wanted it to. And I wasn't happy, so I ripped it back. So I came up with this other idea. So um, it's going to transition from the seed stitch down into beaded ribbing. I tried regular ribbing here, and I didn't like how it looked. So I'm just going to do like this beaded ribbing um, all the way down. But basically, yeah, it transitions... Um, with these long spokes, medium spokes, and then really short spokes. And then kind of transitions into this two by one, like a beaded rib type of thing. So, <laughs> I have lots of seed stitch and this nice, uh, I'm sorry for the needle noises on the desk. Um, this nice spine going down the middle. And I'm into the part where we're <laughs> transitioning into the beaded rib here. And I am loving it. It's so much better than it was before I ripped out. Before I ripped out, I was doing something completely different. And like I said, it did not, it did not translate the way I wanted it to. It looked great on the piece of paper the way I drew it, and it did not look like that when I actually knit it. So I'm really happy that I ripped back. I mean, to be honest, every time I rip something back, I'm like, oh, I don't want to. And then it's totally worth it. So yeah, suck it up and just get it done. So anyway... That is what is happening. So I really wanted a nice, um, this is a triangle shawl knit from the top center out and down. And um, I've got lots of seed stitch. And then I'm going to have this, um, this transition and this like beaded rib. Uh, down here at the bottom and it's just going to be this really nice piece that will go with so many things in my wardrobe so I'm really happy with it and I'm getting close to the end and I'm really I'm really enjoying this knit so um yeah again ripping back it's never fun if I'm not liking it now I'm not going to like it later. It's just, and if I don't like it later, I'm not going to wear it or I'm not going to end up publishing that pattern because I don't like the way it turned out. And so, yeah, it's worth it to rip back, but I do have to have this whole conversation in my, in my head of weighing the pros and cons. And if I rip it out, what am I going to do differently? Like I won't rip it out until I actually have a different plan in place. Um, so yeah, that's, um, a little bit about that. So, like I said, the pattern is still in progress, but the yarn, the yarn is a DK weight. So this is going to be a DK weight shawl. Uh, the one that I'm wearing is fingering weight. Okay. Uh, but this is DK weight. In fact, I'm using some commercial yarn, Baby Bee Sweet Delight in the Sand Castle colorway. Uh, this is 100% acrylic baby yarn uh, from the craft store, and I actually don't mind acrylic at all, and I love that it's easy to care for, which means if I were to give uh, any of my shawls or things away to family members, that I wouldn't have to give them special care instructions, which is always really nice. So anyway, I'm enjoying this knit. I'm really being drawn to more um, solid colors and more of a subtle palette. I say that having just made this thing. Um, but um, yeah, it's, I think I'm starting to find, find myself now in my yarns. So I just joined the second ball of yarn onto this project, like right before sitting down to record. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited. So this is living in a bag by, thank goodness for labels, uh, Woolridge Designs. 
Let's see if I can get that closer. Yep. I won this bag in a knit along hosted by the Canadian knitter, Sarah. And I don't know if she's posting episodes anymore on her YouTube podcast, uh, but she used to host the winter camp. I think she did it for a few years, but uh, yeah, I won this bag from that a couple years ago and I love it and it's awesome. So Woolridge Designs, uh, she has a shop on Etsy and she sells gorgeous bags. So I have a couple of half finished objects and of course they are socks. So um, I'll just go ahead and hold both of those up right here for you to see. Um, so I have finished a self-striping sock and a pattern sock and I have both second socks on the needles. So let me talk about the stripes first. Uh, this is some of my hand dyed yarn. This is D Hard House Creations in my Grand Teton self-striping colorway and I just love it. So it is white, gray, dark blue, and dark green. And I'm using some leftover yarn from my Find Your Fade shawl that I knit like two years ago uh, <laughs> for the uh, toes and heels. And this is a um, Cascade Heritage yarn in a nice green color that sort of matches my green. And yeah, I'm knitting it. I knit this one and I'm now working on the second one. Uh, this is cuff down. I prefer a cuff down sock because my cast on is stretchier than my bind off. I don't know why, but it is. I'm working a one by one rib all the way around the leg of the sock, a short row heel, and then on the foot, I do plain stockinette for the bottom, uh, but continue the one by one rib on the top and then a nice standard toe. So I have the second sock on the needles and I have come to the perfect stopping point uh, where I need to put in the heel. So I am going to do a short row heel tutorial and I'm going to do it with this sock right here uh, to share with you guys. I'm not going to do it right now. Come on. But <laughs> uh, at some point uh, later on, I will be doing a short row heel tutorial uh, with this yarn right here. And yeah, I'm excited. So that means all I have to do is put in the heel, finish the foot, do the toe, just most of the sock, you know, and <laughs> it'll be finished. But yeah, this is in my, um, like I said, my Grand Teton colorway. I am using US size one needles, which is a 2.25 millimeter. And they're on uh, my Chow Gu needles, which are my favorite. I love this cord, it's amazing. And I'm knitting this magic loop style, which is my favorite. And then for my other half finished object, I have a nice plain white pattern sock. And this is a sock for my mother. So I knit her a pair of socks for Christmas and uh, she said she really liked them. So she gave me a request for her second pair and she wanted a pair of white socks. And I just so happened to have some white yarn in my stash. So here we go. But uh, these are very, I mean, it's a very plain solid white which would be very boring to just knit as is. So I decided to add a bit of patterning. So this is another design that I'm working on you guys. And yeah, I sent my mom some pictures of some stitches and asked her which one she liked best. And of course she was like, well, I like them all. And I was like, okay, we'll just pick the one you want first. <laughs> so we went with this one. So I've got uh, one by one twisted ribbing at the top. I've got this nice pattern running down the front panel of the sock and just plain stockinette in the back 
short row heel all the way down. I love this all in one color. There's no break for the toe or the heel. And I continue the pattern down into the toe. And I just think it looks so cool. So I'm gonna take this off the blocker so I can show you the front panel better. So here's the front of the sock. And like I said, it runs, it runs down the whole front of the leg, down the top of the foot, all the way into the toe. And it's so, the pattern is so easy, you guys. Um, you don't need, you don't need a cable needle. Um, it's really straightforward and oh my gosh. Now this is just a solid, this is a solid white commercial yarn. And I'll tell you about that in a second. But could you imagine this with like a lightly speckled yarn or a nice tonal yarn? Like, oh, this would look so cool. So first of all, um, it's stretchy, okay? This is a ribbing type pattern. So it's a nice stretchy sock. So it is kind of bunched up here because that's what the fabric wants to do. But when you stretch it out, you can see it a little bit better. So I've got these faux cables and I've got this chevroni, chevroni, chevron like pattern uh, running down the front. Anyway, it's really nice. I think my mom's going to love it. And I know she will because I made it for her, but I think even, dis even despite me making it for her, I think she's going to love it. So anyway, um, yeah, usually I stop the pattern at the toe and then I do just plain stockinette, but this time I wanted to continue it down. And I think that just makes it look obviously more continuous and, um, less like, you know, the toe is different. It's, it's not, it just continues in the pattern. So yeah, I have the second sock on the needles. I'm not very far. <laughs> I am still working on the one by one ribbing, but, um, yeah, I'll be starting the patterning soon and, uh, I have it all typed up. I have it charted for this pattern. Uh, and what I'm going to do, what I like to do for my sock patterns is, uh, knit the first one completely, transfer my notes onto the computer, type it up and then work the second sock from my typed up pattern. And then that way I get to basically test knit my own pattern, proofread it, um, and make sure it's, it's all set to go for you folks. So yeah, this is, this is really nice. Like I said, this is a gift for my mom and I'm really excited to get going on, on this second sock so I can give it to her soon. So the yarn, I have the label. The yarn is there we go. The yarn is Premier Yarns. Yep. Um, Serenity Sock Weight. There we go. Serenity Sock Weight. And the color is soft white. There we go. Color is soft white. And, uh, yeah, it comes in a ball like this. Uh, I've got two more on the shelf right there, <laughs> as you can see. Um, yeah, I just, I picked this up at the Big Box Craft Store when they were having their, um, I think it was Black Friday sales or something, but these were like $2 a ball for 50 grams. And I was like, what? So this is, um, I think it's 50-50 wool and acrylic. Yeah, 50% superwash merino, 25% rayon and 25% nylon. So, um so it's not it's not acrylic yarn, you guys. It's half 50% superwash merino. Anyway, I am just I'm happy to be using up my stash, you guys. I'm happy to be making patterns like it's good. Progress is being made. It makes me feel really good. 
So the last work in progress I have to share with you is a sweater that I'm knitting for my husband. So uh, I have finished both of the sleeves. So you knit the sleeves first. Um, here is sleeve number one. And here is sleeve number two. I need to transfer it onto waste yarn so that I can use these needles to start the body of the sweater. So the pattern that I'm knitting is called Ranger by Jared Flood. And I knit this same pattern last year uh, to make a sweater for my dad. And now I'm knitting it again for my husband. So Oh my gosh, this yarn is amazing. It's so, it's so squishy and so soft. And really, I mean, look at that. Um, yeah, so I have this much yarn left out of my second skein. And I just wound up the third skein uh, this morning so I can start the body of the sweater. And the the sweater is knit bottom up, so what I'm going to do is use both of these balls of yarn to do a twisted German cast on uh, at the bottom because we want the bottom of the sweater to be stretchy uh, because it's ripping. So yeah, I'm going to do the two separate strands of yarn method to do that cast on because... <sighs> When you do a cast on like the Twisted German cast on and you get almost all your stitches cast on but you run out of yarn on your long tail, it's really devastating because you have to rip all of that back and start your cast on over. So um, a while back a viewer suggested to me that I would use a separate skein, of, just do two different strands uh, to do the cast on and that was brilliant and I can't remember who suggested it but you saved my life last year so I'm going to do um, the same thing again and maybe I'll make a video about it <laughs> so yeah I need to cast on the body of this sweater um, I'm knitting all these shawls and things I could easily get his sweater going it's just that I need to get I need to get this second sleeve on waist yarn I need to actually cast on the body and then it'll be easy enough to knit on while um, watching TV and stuff. So, yes, again, progress is being made. I'm really excited. And this is living in, hang on, I got strings everywhere. <laughs> this is living in one of my bags. This is one of my sweater size bags. Uh, so D Hard House Creations on Etsy, and this is out of some nice Mario fabric in this like grayscale, except Mario is still red, so he stands out, and I think that's so cool. Uh, but yeah, that is that, you guys. So in this last segment of the podcast, I'm going to talk about non-knitting related uh, content. In fact, this is going to be... Uh, just about running, and then that will be it for this episode. So um, I have started back into running, and I'm loving it. So <laughs> I shared with you guys in my, I did a 2018 year in review, and I talked about my year of knitting and my year of running. And it was basically just statistics on like number of yards and number of miles and all that good stuff. So yeah, I'm a math person, you guys. I can't help it. So um, I have been using my bullet journal to keep track of my running and workouts and my schedule and things I'm eating and all kinds of stuff. Um, and I've written personal information here, so I won't actually share the pages with you. But I will share this page. Um, in the month of January, I ran... 20.2 miles. Oh yeah. So, um, so I'm keeping track of my running this way. So I've got each day listed here, um, the number of the day. And then up here I have miles. So each square is a quarter mile. So four of them makes a full mile. 
and I'm basically making this bar graph just to show how many miles I ran that day. And this is just running. This doesn't include walking. And yeah, I ran 20.2 miles in the month of January. And last year, I've got my stats. I decided to tape that paper on the wall. My stats from last year, 2018. In the month of January, you guys, I ran... 5.6 miles and this year I ran 20.2 so I feel like I'm gonna beat last year which was my goal so that's what's going on for January it is now February and oh I didn't add my run from this morning so so far um, this month I've been doing a lot of two mile runs and like I said with the weather I've been able to run outside a little bit. So I've, I've added in this color coding of if I run inside on the treadmill, I'll color in the bar with one color. And if I run outside, I'll do it in another color. Um, and I did run this morning. I ran, I think I did a mile and a half on the treadmill or a mile and a quarter, but I forgot to add it to my bullet journal. So I have to do that later. But um, yeah, so in January, I did a lot of, let me go back again, a lot of one mile runs, right? Like 1.35. <laughs> I need to move the camera. Um, <laughs> I did a two mile run there, but anyway, um, I've picked up running again in December and, um, I've mentioned this before, but one thing I've learned is that when I get personally for me, when I start up running again, I always end up stopping. Um, I have to s slowly get back into it. I can't just take three weeks off and then immediately go out and run five miles because then I end up injuring myself. So I'm taking it slow. So in January, I did a lot of one mile plus some extra change. Um, and now for February, I'm doing a bunch of two mile runs. And so it's scaling up pretty nicely. And yeah, I'm sticking with it. So it has been um, two full months that I've stuck with it. And I'm really proud of myself for doing that. I am by no means um, ready to run a marathon or anything like that. So it's not serious training, but it is helping me to get healthy again and uh, really enjoy running, which I used to do a lot of when I was a college student and it helped me deal with stress. And <laughs> um, yeah, it's knitting helps me deal with stress too, but it's more of a, honestly, it's more of a creative outlet for me. And so running lets me just, it's almost like meditating. Like I get to escape all my problems and everything that's stressing me out. And I get to just focus on putting my foot to the ground and taking one step forward until I get to where I'm going. And I don't know why, but it is so therapeutic like really therapeutic, you guys. So anyway, I'm really proud of myself. I'm really happy and I wanted to share it with you. So thanks, thanks for sticking with me to the end of this episode. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button wherever it is if you like what you see. So again, thanks for joining me today and I hope to see you next time. So until next time, happy knitting. Bye.